Hey guys, I know it's Wednesday, but I've been getting a ton, ton of requests to review this bottle right here. Uh, it sits on my barrel, so people watch my videos and I'm like, can you please review that one? It's the Peerless Double Oaked, which was released back in September. It's not exactly what's on the shelf, but a new release that Double Oak bourbon fans are excited about. Let's try it right here on the Mass and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C. from The Mash and Drum, and today we're reviewing the new Double Oak Bourbon from Kentucky Peerless Distilling. Kentucky Peerless said they started crafting Double Oak whiskeys with the original intention of rescuing whiskey from a leaky barrel. When a barrel has a leak that cannot be repaired, the whiskey is transferred into a new charred oak barrel. By exposing the whiskey to a second barrel, the whiskey develops new complexity. Now, of course, we've heard this technique uh, with Woodford Double Oaked, with Old Forester 1910, also toasted bourbons, so that double cask maturation adding some more complexity to a bourbon. With the amazing response to a very limited double oak program to date, we have decided to improve the quality and accessibility of the product, Master Distiller Caleb Kilburn said in a prepared statement. Where in the past we would leave things up to chance, we are now intentionally curating barrels to become double oak. Uh, now originally these were distillery only releases. Uh, Peerless was known to release these at the distillery uh, in Louisville. Um, but now they want to release it out to some retailers and make the, like they said, accessibility a little bit broader. So bottles are available now in Kentucky, California, Illinois, Florida, and New York. As you may or may not know, Peerless does everything grain to glass. These are bottled at barrel proof. Mine happens to be 107.1 proof, uh, but they will vary. It's non chill filtered, and I bought mine for about 70 bucks, which is around the same price as their regular bourbon. So let's go to the nose. I smell like a cigar humidor, like a cigar box <laughs> in here, actually. Definitely some chocolate. Nice little hint of citrus there. There's definitely some sweet tobacco going on, some nice little cigar notes. You know, getting like a fresh cut wood type thing. Like campfire, I think it could get kind of that secondary barrel char a little bit. Yeah, that, that orange is kind of mixing with like a nice, like a... I don't know, like a honey, lemon, orange, like tea thing going on. It's like an herbal quality to it. I dig it. It's got a nice nose for double oaked. Let's try it. It actually comes off spicier than I thought it was going to be. Usually double oak bourbons are pretty mellow. This one. And maybe because I'm so used to double oak bourbons being a little bit lower proof. But man, this one at barrel strength, probably the most viscous one I've had in a long time. Yeah, this comes off very leathery, very chocolatey, a lot of black pepper. I think the, the, the rye spice here is really making a nice impact to it. It's not overly sweet. It does give you a nice little balance between the sweet and the spice. Also a lot of those earthy characteristics, not earthy in a bad way where it's like coming off young, but earthy where you're getting, like you said, more of the leather, tobacco, sweet tobacco, some fresh cut wood, some of those notes that are that are going on. Yeah, cocoa powder. Definitely more the rye spice. The orange spice that I was getting on the nose is starting to, starting to, you know, uh, come to the forefront a little bit here, like, might make just little hints of it as you sip this. It's like it's like wrapped up in between the tobacco, leather, cocoa, cocoa powder, chocolate. I mean, it's a little bit drying on the back end, which is something I've kind of grown accustomed to with double oak bourbon. Some of them do come off a little bit drying. But let's do this. Let's uh, let's compare this to Old Farcer 1910 and Woodford Double Oak, two of the more available uh, double oak products on the market. All right, guys, we are all set up here. Woodford Double Oaked, 1910 from Old Forester, and the new Kentucky Peerless Double Oaked. 
I got them kind of in price order here. 50, 60, and 70. <laughs> so let's start with the Woodford here and compare to the Peerless. I think the Woodford actually comes off sweeter. A little bit more of the chocolate, kind of like nougat, Three Musketeers bar, Snickers bar as I call it. A little bit more of that marshmallow note comes through. But also Woodford has like this little bit of like a sour quality to it that I get sometimes. Definitely picking it up here a little bit. Yeah, the Peerless is just a little bit more tobacco, campfire, cigar heavy. Especially when you compare them. All right, let's go to the 1910. Yeah, 1910, different animal altogether. 1910 comes off more espresso and chocolate, a little bit more coffee. But I could see some of the similarities here. I think the 1910 is a little bit closer to the Peerless than the Woodford is. All right, let's try the Woodford on the palate here. Man, it's sweet. But man, coming off the Peerless, the Peerless has way more viscosity and way more spice and a, a much longer lingering finish. Now, the flavors are different here because like I said, you're looking at a little bit more tobacco flavored notes and more woodsy and cocoa powder, a little bit of citrus here on the Peerless. And to the, you know, Woodford, you're looking at more sweet, more marshmallow, more uh, the chocolates there, and a lot, a lot more like intense vanilla flavors. But man, the finish to that just dies coming off the Peerless. One more sip here. Yeah, the Woodford is good. I think the Woodford is a great crowd pleaser if you want something a little bit more on the sweet side, something a little bit more confectionary. Uh, but again, I think the Peerless, I, I have to, you know, have a couple cigars with this Peerless because this, this is just like, I feel like you're drinking a little bit of a cigar box here. All right, let's try the 1910. Now 1910, 93 proof, slightly higher than Woodford at 90.4. This is 93 proof. Now the 1910, even though the flavors I think are a little bit more interesting than the Woodford Reserve, but again, it really depends on your palate. I'm not gonna say what's, what's wrong and what's right. It really depends on what you like. Um, I'm just trying to guide you guys as to what the flavor profiles are because any, you could take any three of these any day of the week depending on what you, what you like. Um, the 1910, I think, definitely takes a turn on more of the espresso route and a little bit more of the chocolate. And I think it's probably the oakiest out of all three. Yeah, and I actually think the 1910 has probably the easiest finish out of the three of them. When I went back to the Woodford, actually the Woodford had a little bit of a, of a spice kick on the back end. Let's go to the Kentucky Peerless. Wow, coming off these two, the Kentucky Peerless, I could tell you, it's not as sweet. It's more spice citrus and wood driven and when i say wood driven i don't really mean oak i mean more of like that again like that cigar box sweet tobacco type thing going on a little bit of that drying aspect to it but the spice and the viscosity of it absolutely is well beyond these two products here well beyond the woodford and the 1910. now when you're comparing them the woodford i think for those of you out there that want something a little bit more sweet not so much of a spicy finish, not so wood heavy. The double oaked is where it's at for you, especially at 50 bucks and very, very available. The 1910, I think, gives you a little bit of a darker espresso chocolate, even an easier finish. But while I think you get the oak and the wood notes, it's different than what you get in the Peerless. I think the oak notes comes from that really, really heavy char that they give that secondary barrel to make 1910. Uh, it gives it that really chocolatey, kind of like a, almost like a boozy type of chocolatey mouthfeel to it. Uh, and, and a nice finish to it as well. But the finish I think is actually easier than the Woodford and the, and the Peerless. Now, if that's what you like, or if you're looking for something different than that, the Peerless I think is what gives you, again, citrus, fresh cut wood, a little bit more of the, of the, like those tobacco type flavors. Is it, is it a $70 bourbon? I don't think so. I wish this was about 50, kind of in line with the Woodford Reserve. But when you're talking about these three products, they're all three are completely different. 
Um, if I had to give you a recommendation for the Kentucky Peerless Double Oaked, I would try this before you buy it. Don't go into this thinking it's gonna be like a higher proof version of the Woodford Double Oaked, because I really do think it tastes very different. You have sweet, you have a little bit more uh, of chocolate and some oak, and this is a little bit more tobacco and savory. So that's pretty much my breakdown. And um, I mean, I do like the Kentucky Peerless. I just wish it was a little bit cheaper. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the new Kentucky Peerless Double Oaked here on the Master and Drum. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this, what you think of it. But before we go, I'm going to do the uh, double, 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 double oaked. I'm going to blend it all three together. And let's see what that does before I sign off here. I know you guys like when I blend this shit at the end. Here we go. Nope. Nope. That did not work. See you guys next time on the Mash and Drum.